Good morning and welcome to the Streamlined Connection. I'm Miriam Ortiz Pino and we are on the Bold Brave TV network. Um, I'm super excited today uh, for my guest, but before that, I wanna just make sure you all know what the Streamlined Connection is all about. It is the connection between productivity, money mindset, and our organization and how using all those things together can help us um, achieve more freedom and uh, work less, have more fun. Um, it can help us build wealth if we run our own businesses. And it just makes things easier all the way around. And for those of you that don't know who I am, I'm a certified professional organizer and money breakthrough business coach. And lately, I've been studying how habits affect our productivity and the role of money mindset uh, in terms of our clutter, which is a great way to approach decluttering because it helps you let go of things that no longer serve you and create that nurturing, supportive environment. Um, and one of the reasons I'm so excited to have today's guest on is I know she has a lot of the same philosophies that I do about organizing and about um, how we work with clients. Um, but there are some differences, and um, so I'm really excited about that. Today's guest is Nitra Rose. She has a company called Organizing Lifestyles. She's in Houston, or Houston adjacent. We'll find out in just a minute. Um, she's been organizing for quite a while, and I, I don't know her very well, but I've been so impressed. We've been on a couple of... Um, different kind of panel discussions with each other uh, in the last couple of years, and I am I just love her to death. So um, please welcome Nitra Rose of Organizing Lifestyles. Good morning, Nitra. Good morning, Miriam. Thanks for having me today. You are so welcome. I, um, I was looking at your website, and we have so many things in common. Uh, just before we went live today, we were talking about how you do a morning uh, TV segment. I, I assume you do it kind of semi-regularly like I do here in Albuquerque. But it's so it was so similar, you know? They always want us to tell people how to get organized in six minutes and show a bunch of product. And right. it's, it's not possible, but you did a great job. <laughs> and like, I was so impressed, especially uh, with that pantry one you did, because um, I've, I've been trying to talk them into doing that for years. So tell oh, us a little bit about what that experience was like for you. So that was a pretty fun experience. Um, we went in and the camera crew came in and we had to organize a pantry. So what I did is I actually held a contest on social media for people to send me pictures of their pantries if they want to get them organized. And I was like, look, you're going to be on TV. So you have to agree to that. Um, and you have to be OK with people seeing the bad and then the good. Um, mm -hmm. And it was really doing a pantry on a budget is what the, um, that segment was about. So yeah. I had to come up with some really creative ideas. So it's really funny how TV works because, you know, you go in, they do a video of the bad pantry and you walk around. And then mm -hmm. there's like this, this segment that where like they're taking different videos. I have uh, my assistant there with me at that time. And so she's running in there trying to fix up the pantry. And then, you know, the camera takes a break and it takes a few videos of that. And they're like, wait, let me get a shot of you in the pantry and, you know, talking to the client. And then all of a sudden it's done, which, you know, mm -hmm. that whole segment is probably like 10 minutes, if that. But it took us maybe two or three hours to shoot it because we had to actually organize the pantry. So we had to right. kind of set things in place. So, you know, TV is always interesting and fun. Yeah, I would I would tell the audience today that uh, while watching people get organized on TV is really fun, it's a lot more hard work in person. And you are seeing approximately 1 20th of the effort that goes right. into it. Um, and so it's really hard to train on TV too. So you're getting tips, but if you don't know how to put the tips into place with other aspects of the system that we create for our clients, then it may or may not work by just following exactly what we said. It's right. designed to give you a little tidbit of how it might be to work with us, but um, you did a fantastic job. It was very real and very, um, I love the budget-friendly piece of it. Thank you. Um, Cause yeah, I mean, my favorite tool in my toolbox is my Sharpie. So <laughs> <laughs> yes, you don't always need a labor maker. <laughs> no, I bought one when I started my business 20 years ago, I bought a fancy one and I've literally used it four times. 
<laughs> that is so funny. Well, you know, actually, when I first started, I didn't even have a label maker. So I didn't know that was a thing when I first started. And I went to conference and the lady was like, hey, I'm going to give away some gifts today. And she was like, what's the one thing every organizer need? And she was like, a lab-. you know, people are like a label maker. And I was looking around like, oh, I never thought to go get that. What is that? <laughs> Right. And she gave each of us a label maker. So I was like, oh, this is amazing. Wow. Yeah. I missed that session. Yes. Oh, oh, I was like, oh, great. <laughs> Thank you. You saved me. <laughs> Good thing nobody wanted me to label at that time. So, <laughs> I know. Well, I found early on that most of my clients actually had a label maker because they thought it would make them organized, but right. then they never actually used it. So I sometimes use theirs. Um, sometimes they don't want to spend the extra time because I don't know. Some of our clients may not have ever tried a label maker. It's really hard to peel the back off those things. Yeah, and is. so you're standing there with two people staring at you while you're trying to peel it off. <laughs> and it's awkward. Yeah, it's and very weird. awkward. Yeah. It's like, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> and some people have, they don't even know how to use them. Most of them, they're just like, oh, I got this label maker to get organized and never even turned the thing on. So, you know. Right. Yeah. And, and often... Okay. When we have, um, when we're working with a client, often things have to get relabeled several times before we finish setting up. So there's the temporary factor. All right. We're going to have to take a quick break, but when we come back, uh, we will be speaking with Nitra Rose and we are going to, um, get more into her philosophy about how to be organized. Uh, I'm Miriam Ortiz Pino. This is the Streamlined Connection on Bold Brave TV Network, and we'll be right back. The free one minute mail solution works for email too, and you can download it at the link below or over there. Maybe it's a, the link. I am excited. We were just talking about our, our experiences on, on local TV. And now I want to get into the other thing that I found so exciting about her website. It's her tagline because it's so similar to mine. <laughs> not, I mean, it's not actually, the words aren't actually the same, but the theory and the philosophy behind what we say is so similar. And so I know we're going to have a great discussion about it. It yeah. is, um, you know, how of an organized life it, you organize your life to make things easier. And I love that because I'm a lazy person, basically. Maybe not lazy, lazy might not be the right word, but I like to have a lot of free time and a lot of freedom to not be working really hard. I need a lot of downtime. So tell me, Nidra, how you came about thinking about organizing as making life easier. So for me, um, you know, you know, getting into organizing, you know, like most organizers, like some of us, you know, it's something that we've always done. So growing up, um, my mom was not like the label maker, but everything definitely had a place and you had to put things back in their place. Like even as a young kid, if I brought out toys, you know, I could play with that one toy, but when you finish, you put that toy up before you bring out another toy. So that was like her thing. Like I'm not, you're not about to have my whole living room and house looking crazy. So, so for me, you know, going through life, I realized, you know, an organized life is an easier life. And once I got into this industry, you know, I made that my company's motto because it is a fact (laughs) that when you are organized, when things are in their place, when they have somewhere to go, it makes your life a lot easier. It saves you time. It saves, you know, you're not stressed out looking for things. It saves you money. So there's so many things that organization offers. Um, which is why I actually had that tagline and why I truly believe in that tagline. Um, And, you know, my company model, and we follow that every day with every single client when it Mm -hmm. comes to organization. Yeah. It's, it's really important to keep that in mind. Like we're, we're not here to make it organized. Like we would organize it. We're organizing for our client to have an easier day. Um, And I think that that can, can sometimes trip people up. It, Mm -hmm. And and back to the TV thing, you know, like it's not going to look like it does on TV because that might not work for you and the way you think and what your lifestyle is. Right, right. And I'm definitely not going to come to your Mm -hmm. house with makeup on and dressed up in a dress and heels um, when we come to organizing reality. (laughs) Exactly. It's like, um, what do you wear to organize people? Uh, Jeans and a T-shirt. Right. Workout. My chucks. (laughs) Like, yeah. you know, steel toe shoes on some jobs. Um, <laughs> um, I like the point, too, that you made about when, when we were growing up. I think we're close to the same age. We're Gen X, right? Are you Gen X? Yeah. You're a little younger than me, I think. But, um, so, yeah. <laughs> the, um, 
you know, we grew up in that time where our parents had a room and you didn't go in there unless you were invited and you kept your toys in your room. You could bring them out to play, but you put them away and you put something away before you brought it out. And that was even for me who had a disorganized mom. Mm -hmm. So, you know, she spent my whole childhood trying to be organized and reading tips and tricks mm -hmm. and implementing various systems and then giving up on the systems before she made them habit. And I would go around and try to simplify the system so that we could deal with it. Yeah. <laughs> um, but it's true. It's a learned skill. So it even is. those of us that liked order early on, it's not that we knew how to organize right off the bat. We experimented. We played with it. We read articles and understood the tips were coming from a different place than the disorganized people yes. understood it from. So... I love that that you talk about how you learned it from your mom as well. Um, so tell me, what do you think the difference between putting something away and being organized and creating systems is? So the difference for me is very simple, and I like to explain this to my clients. So because I do in-person consultations because um, I'm a very visual person. Um, and the reason I do those is because... I compare us to a cleaning service and then you have an organizer. So mm -hmm. when the cleaning service comes, they clean up, but they may put your stuff in a pile mm -hmm. and clean around it, right? Where right. an organizer is going to try to create a system for you. So if I see that your shoes are on the floor in your closet, I'm not going to suggest that you get shoe bins because that's not a system that you're going to follow because you're not going to put the shoes back in. If you're not putting them in the box, you're not going to put them back in the bin. It right. looks cute, but it's not going to work for you. Exactly. <clears throat> I've had clients who said, you know, they're going their closet. Like I spent all day, I'm looking for what to wear to work. And I know one client was left-handed instead of right-handed. So mm -hmm. all of his work clothes were on the right side. So he literally was spending all day looking for something when he should have had it separated by just his work stuff, but put it on the left side because natu mm -hmm. naturally he's going to look to the left first. <laughs> yeah, and you gotta work like, with your natural tendencies, people. Your natural <laughs> tendencies. Everything is about systems based on what it is that you do. And that's what an organizer brings to the table. We bring those systems that we help you implement. Like I've had clients, that, I had one client, she said, Nietzsche, I've organized this space 10 times. But until you came and actually put a system in place is when it actually worked. And they're able to maintain the organization from there. So, you mm -hmm. know, I always tell people, don't let the fluff on TV fool you. It's cute. It's pretty. I love the clear bins. I love the clear shelves. But that does not work for everybody. And it yeah. may not be the system for you to work, you know. So you really have to create things that work for you and your household. And everybody in the household is different. The kids are not going to have the same system as the parents. So you have to adapt to those things. You know, you <sighs> want the kids to create their own lunches and snacks. You can't put it on the third shelf. You got to put it below. Right. And have it open for them to go and they can go grab their own snacks and make their own lunch. Allow them to do that. You know, you know, so yeah. it's, it's all about systems. You know, your son is going to be different than your daughter. You know, men mm -hmm. tend to just like grab things. They don't want to top on top of their men. They don't want to keep right. them pretty. They want it, it can be in the bin, but they, they don't want tops. They just want to yeah. grab it and go and they want to dump. And when they come back, that's it. Like exactly. quit making things difficult for people. So, you know, everybody has a system. And we have to set up those systems for each person and individual in the house versus trying to make everything look how we think it should look by just putting things away. You know, like we fold it up, we put it away. That, that may not be the system that worked for you. So we got to come up with something different. Yeah. So I want to just because I work with some business owners as well. I just want to throw in my example right here on my shelf. <laughs> I don't actually like binders because mm -hmm. you have to open the rings and put stuff away. Right. Right. <laughs> but I needed to make it pretty for TV. Um, mm -hmm. So I'm going to tell you how I approach that when we come back and then we'll go deeper into the conversation with Nitra Rose of Organizing Lifestyles. And I am Miriam Ortiz Pino. This is the Streamlined Connection. We're on the Bold Brave TV network. And stay tuned so you can figure out how I solved my organizing dilemma. Uh, we'll be right back. The Streamline Clutter Solution online course will help you gain control of your stuff and space. What are you waiting for? The link's around here somewhere. I'm speaking with Nitra Rose of Organizing Lifestyles today, and we're just kind of 
uh, noodling around how we approach organizing and, and how systems are different than just getting organized. Um, and Nitra gave us some great examples of, of ways she set up some things without lids for, for some of her clients. And I was pointing out that I don't like binders, but I needed something that looked really neat on the shelf for um, TV. So I had to figure it out because I like to see my stuff. And usually my old style was just having um, expanding files on the shelf, but they look kind of junky. So I made the compromise and I put all the stuff that is kind of my resource material into binders because it doesn't, they don't need to get opened over and over and over. But anything that's loose because it's a project or it's temporary papers um, stays in a file but I just put them all in the magazine folders holders. So there's a binder and then the loose things that go with it, the handouts for that particular module or whatever it is. So you, there's a lot of different ways you can work with your own tendencies right, and right. still get a neat organized look. And as I'm looking at that, it's a little messy today. I feel like that. <laughs> it looks good. It's all contained. That's what's important. It's contained. Right. Um, but that's just it. How much, kind of mess are you comfortable with? And how do you define organization? What does organization look like to you as the person that might need help? Um, because like your client said, you know, she kept getting reorganized. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. really rearranging, don't you think? Right. Yep. It's definitely <laughs> rearranging. Yes. <laughs> Yeah. It's, it, and that's what organization is. It's rearranging things. You know, the first thing people always say is, I don't have enough space. I don't have enough space for this stuff. And I'm always like, no, you just got too much stuff in the right. space. So <laughs> I like using the metaphor of pouring milk into your glass. And when the right. glass fills up, you don't say, I just need to go get a bigger glass while you keep right. pouring. <laughs> right. <laughs> you, you take a sip and make room for your cookie. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. It, that's a. I'm gonna start using that example. I like that. Take it. I, I love it too. I love that. I <laughs> love that. Um, yeah. So tell me a little bit. Your background is a bit in project management, but is that what you studied at? At um, where did you go? You went to Prairie, Prairie, Prairie View. Mm -hmm. Where is that? What you studied? Project management. So my uh, major was business. Okay. And my minor was in uh, marketing. So I was a business manager major and then in marketing. So um, in my corporate environment, I've always been in leadership roles. Um, but prior to coming to being an organizer, I was a project manager for probably three or four years um, prior to that. So my company is based off of team projects. Um, so I have a team that actually comes in with me to work on certain projects. Um, and that comes from my project management background. So I'm all about, yeah. okay, I need you to focus on this space and this is what you're going to work on for the day. And then you work on that and that kind of thing. Um, yeah. So that's kind of how we work um, together to help the client to yeah, get the best results. <laughs> I love that background because it combines the structure and knowing that the structure is flexible because that's what project management is about, right? It's mm -hmm. best laid plans. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, it's uh, management of yes. people. Mm -hmm. It's group it dynamics. Mm -hmm. It's a little bit of vision and attention to detail. So yes, very strong attention to detail and you have to be ready when things change. Cause yeah, adaptable. Change when you're with the client, you got to be adaptable just like you have to be in, you know, corporate America in the real world in project management. You know, you miss a deadline, you know, you have a client who needs to take a break <laughs> or right. maybe is getting very emotional over something. So, you know, things happen. So, you know, you got to be able to adapt very quickly and still, you know, get the end result that you're looking for. Yeah. And I think that that's one of the reasons you hire a professional organizer is because you don't know where to start or attention to detail isn't your strong suit. And so using someone that has that ability to see both and to bring all these other things to the table, it's not just about making it pretty. It's all the considerations that go into creating the system for the client. Right. Yeah. So when I saw that we had similar background, I was like, ah, oh, no wonder. <laughs> Like, this is why we fish. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, all right. So tell me a little bit about what kind of client you like to work with. Who's your ideal client? So my ideal clients are homeowners who have been in their homes at least seven or plus years because mm. they've been able to, you know, gather some items and 
right. create some clutter, as they may say. <laughs> Um, I enjoy working with baby boomers and um, new families um, mm-hmm. that are growing. So a lot of my clients have, I've worked with them when they were single, when they got married, and then when they had kids. So, you know, those are some of my ideal clients, baby boomers, people who are transitioning. So mm-hmm. kids who are moving out of the house and they're becoming empty nesters. Now they're trying to downsize are, you know, create an environment just for themselves um, and not just for them and their kids. So those are my main um, clients and ideal clients that I do enjoy working with. Nice. It's a lot of life transition type stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, And I love that you've niched down to know they've been in their place for seven years. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Because the first year, you still are backing, you know, maybe the first two years for some people. So (laughs) I I, I don't know what happened, like starting in I don't know, over the summer, I had this flurry of people calling to work with me that were just moving into a small space and they'd been there like two days and they were so fed up that it wasn't set up yet. And I'm all, yeah, you've been there two days. Take a breath. Yeah, right, right. I, we just had a client this summer. She was moving from Atlanta and she was like, I just want to come in and the house is completely set up and done. And that's what we did. Like we went in, nice. we unpacked everything, we organized everything. She was able to bring her little suitcase and roll in there, take a shower and get into bed. Like it's already done. <laughs> I, I've actually had a couple of those clients and they're really fun. Um, yes. But that's not typical. <laughs> This is true. It's not typical. Yeah. Those are the unicorns. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> the nice. great thing about it, though, is always when they call you back and they're like, so where did you put such and such? I was looking for that. And I'm like, it's in the left drawer at the bottom in the back. And they're like, oh, you're wonderful. <laughs> and then they wonder why, how you know. And it's right. Like, well, so this is the other thing I noticed about Nitria, everybody. When I was, we have a similar process. So when she was doing that pantry and the video that's on her website, I was like, that's exactly how I would approach that. (laughs) The end result was not exactly what I would have done, but the approach of of how we evaluate the stuff and the order that the stuff gets evaluated. And then, you know, all of that stuff was very similar. And it allows us to know where our clients' items are. So when they're struggling, they can call or text and we're like, third drawer on the left. Right. (laughs) Second shelf on the right. Right. (laughs) (laughs) And that's because we made it easier. And it's not identical at every place, like the guy with the left-handed guy. So we'll get more into some of this when we come back. I am Miriam Ortiz Pino. This is the Streamlined Connection on Bold Brave TV Network. And, um, yeah, we're going to talk about making beds after we come back as well. So we'll be right back. Get the Streamlined Paper Solution online course and learn quick ways to control interesting information. The link's here. Welcome back. I'm Miriam Ortiz Pino. This is the Streamlined Connection on Bold Brave TV Network. And Nitra Rose of Organizing Lifestyles is here. And we are talking about how much fun we have working with clients and baffling them with our easy systems so that we know where they can find their stuff when they forget where we've moved it to. Um, Which is always a dilemma, right? There's a communication piece that happens. So when you work with someone that wants you just to do it for them, Mm -hmm. like that move in client you had, you run the risk of not them not being able to find any of their stuff or it not being in a great place. So Mm -hmm. ideally, I think you would rather work with the person as well, right? Most definitely. You always want to work with the person. You know, I always think of the ones who don't want to work with us. I just like those clients because now I can be creative in the space and kind of create my own thing in that space. So it allows you to kind of be yourself and really, Mm -hmm. you know, show off, you know, what you can do as far as organizing um, in those senses. But definitely working with the client is much better because you get to see, you know, the end result of how that's actually benefiting that person. Yeah. So even if you're organizing your own selves, people, um, don't forget to tell the rest of your family where you moved the stuff to. That's important. Okay. Like I, I had a client get so angry that her husband was putting the coffee mugs in the wrong cabinet. And I'm like, well, why is he doing that? And she's like, well, they used to live over there. I'm like, well, did she you tell, tell him you moved them? <laughs> right. 
right. She she's like, I well, he should know. And I'm like, how? Right, yeah. <laughs> How have you to tell? Right. I always say that's a good joke to play on people because I'm a big prankster. So right. I always say that's a good joke to play. Like if the spouse wasn't there for the organizing session and then they come uh-huh. home and we move something. I was like, right. just see how long it takes them to find it. Like just. <laughs> but eventually you want to take your you spouse tell on a tour of the house. <laughs> right. You, you want to show them what's happened. <laughs> They're not mind readers. Yeah. They, I mean, you might be really connected, but they yeah. don't actually share your brain. Um, and with kids too, right? Like oh, I yeah. told them to clean up their room and I'm like, well, how did you show them how to do that? Right. Well, they should know. Yeah. <laughs> yes, the kids should just know how to clean up the room. And it's so funny. I had a friend, her daughter, when she was younger, she's 18 now, but when she was like 13, she would be like, I tell her to clean up her room. She just throws everything under the bed. And I was like, because and it's does she have a place for the stuff to go that she's throwing? She was like, well, not really. Well, then that's why it goes under the bed. And to her, it's cleaned up. <laughs> like, right. What do you space? <laughs> right. <laughs> she's like, it's open, it's free, it's going, and it's quick. <laughs> yeah. And the opposite of that, of course, is our clients that open a card table or a folding table to have more service space. Right. <laughs> and it just becomes a dumping ground. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Less just- space on the surfaces means you have to put stuff away a little bit. Right. Um, so I'm fascinated uh, by your process. I'd love to hear a little bit more. Do you have, have you kind of made a signature system of it or is it just cause it's the way you, you've always done it? Yeah, so I, I consider it a signature way. I don't know how, you know, other people do mm-hmm. it. I have, I've worked with a few organizers, but not that many. Um, but for me, um, it's being able to get through that space in a timely manner, um, mm-hmm. but still be, you know, proactive and still get what we need to get done. Um, mm-hmm. So my approach is always to, like, start at the floor. We start on the right side. Of course, I'm right-handed. Mm-hmm. <laughs> And we make a, you know, we go all the way around in that space on the Mm -hmm. floor. And then we go to the next level and we go all the way around. Then we go up and go all the way around. I do the same thing in garages. I do the Uh same thing in pantries, closets. And that system works. And clients are like, oh, my gosh, you cleared this space out in like 30 minutes. And this would have took me five hours, of -hmm. course, because I have a system in place. (laughs) Yeah. And it's interesting. So just so everyone sees the differences. I have the same system, but it's completely different. So... (laughs) a systematic approach to the rooms but mm-hmm. I tend to I'm right-handed but I work left to right oh. but I also clear out the middle of the floor first because I'm one of those people that moves fast and mm-hmm. I will trip over a lot of stuff so first I clear the floor in the center and kind of move things to the periphery and then I work left and I go all the way up each wall so mm-hmm. I work in sections by wall nice um not by level so I guess I'm more vertical and you're right. more horizontal. Right. I'm more horizontal. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but it's it helps us manage the time mm-hmm. um, and it manages the client expectations, right? Yes. Mm-hmm. It does. Um, and it teaches them how to maintain or create a system in a different spot um, right. for themselves later. So. Exactly. Yes. I, I love, love it. <laughs> All right. So once you kind of clear everything out, do you then clean or do you sort like what's your next step after you so as i'm pulling things out we sort at the same time so yeah. as we're going through pulling things out it's getting placed into different categories mm-hmm. um once we get to that part then of course the client then goes through and says okay what do you want to keep what do you want to let go and then we kind of go through that par- process of making decisions um yeah. my thing is that we're always going to make a decision yeah. it's either going to stay mm-hmm. it's going to go or it's going to go to donate <laughs> so right. unless it's just trash, um, you know, because you'll have clients that'll say, oh, let me think about that. Nope. You got to make a decision. It's and a life, gum wrapper. It's a pizza box. Right. It's gotta, a, yeah. What is it going to do? Let's let's talk about it and mm-hmm. let's make a decision on it. Like because procrastination is very known in our industry, which is why people need our help. Mm-hmm. Procrastination. So <laughs> we're not going to do that. <laughs> we're going to make a decision. Going to make a decision. You got to tell me right now. We're not talking about it later right now. Um, yeah. And then, you know, once we do that, then we go back into the space and we um, see what's left. And then we do the organization portion from there. And I kind of go through with the client first, like, this is my thought process. This is what I'm thinking that's going to work for you based mm-hmm. on, you know, what we've discussed. And then the client will say, yay and nay. I'll have them come back and, you know, they'll say, uh, you know, I'll say try for a few weeks. 
and see how it goes. If mm -hmm. it doesn't, let me know. Most clients keep it the exact same way and they're able to maintain it. And I tell them, it's going to get messy again. Don't beat yourself up because now you have a place for it to go. So it makes it easier to clean up. Right. Resetting <laughs> is takes much less time. Right. Much less time. So, yeah. Um, okay. So I do similar to that as well, but I do a, a layered decision-making process because I'm learning more about how the brain works. So I used to do it like you do, mm -hmm. but now I take them, uh, we do obvious trash or the easy let goes as we take stuff out of the space. Mm -hmm. And then when we go to put things back, we evaluate each category um, with um, the refined decision gotcha. on it. Okay. And we do yes, no, maybe. And if mm -hmm. the maybe pile sometimes is huge. Sometimes yeah. it's like two or three yeah. things because be very big. <laughs> they get they get in a, a rhythm and some practice. Mm -hmm. So we'll continue with this thought after the break. Get the streamlined paper solution online course and learn quick ways to control interesting information. The link's here. Okay. Um, so we were talking. What were we talking about? We were talking about our system. Yes. And Oh, all right. So decision making. And it doesn't really matter. It's all about practicing decisions. So sometimes I have to try different methods for different clients, but I find that yes, no, maybe allows them to see how you can whittle it down if you're having a hard time. Right. What are the favorites? What are the least favorites? Keep going from there. Um, but do you have any great tricks of, of how to help clients make decisions? Um. You know, some of my clients will say I give them the eye. <laughs> I don't know what that eye is, but I've heard that I give an eye and they're like, okay, Nitra, I'm going to do it. <laughs> but my trick is really to make them think about why they feel that they need it. So that's kind of my trick. I'm always like, so why do you think you need that? And what are you going to use it for? And when's the last time you used it? Is it yeah. something we could replace very easily? And by the time I get to probably the third question, they like, you know what? You're right. I can let this go. I don't yes. really need that. Um, so really getting them to assess and think about the mm -hmm. things that they have um, is kind of my approach to get them to get rid of things. I mean, I always tell people, like, I've had people that are shoe lovers. I had one lady had 200 pair of shoes. Mm -hmm. I said, listen, if you want to buy shoes every day, feel free. But when you're in the shoe store, what I need you to think about is what pair of shoes at home that you can get rid of. So as long as you're taking out and replacing, mm -hmm. it makes a difference than just mm -hmm. buying things and putting them in and not taking something out. Even when you go buy clothes, you know, yeah. if you're buying a shirt, what shirt at home am I going to get rid of that I don't need anymore to mm -hmm. get this new shirt? Just think about things that way. And so people always say, every time I'm in the store now, like your little voice is in my head. You don't need that. You don't <laughs> Yeah, I, was like, we, I don't talk like that, but I'm glad to be the voice on your shoulder of reason. <laughs> I know my clients have my voice in their head, too. Um, but it's because we have a hierarchy of questions. We've yeah. learned how to make the decisions. We've learned how to it's not ra rationalizing or judging. It is figuring out if this thing is going to solve a problem I currently right. have or right. if it is something that makes me happy or mm -hmm. sparks joy, as yeah. you are. Um <laughs> You know, it's it's will this enhance my life in some way versus I just think it's pretty and shiny and I have money and I happen to be standing next to it. So I'm going right. to just throw it yeah. in my cart and get home without awareness. So it's right. about awareness. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Um. So this was interesting. We were talking about how because our systems are similar and we know we can predict to a certain amount its experience um, but also it's understanding human psychology and group dynamics. We can predict quite a bit of what's going to happen for our clients. And you mentioned you like to go do in-person consults mm -hmm. and I do a phone consult first and then I do the tour and, and the planning and, and that kind of thing during the first session. Mm -hmm. um, but you also said something about how you just, know what to do and you can help them go through it and it's always the same mm -hmm. <laughs> and it's just a different approach and so mm -hmm. uh, do you do any virtual organizing 
I do not. I have done one virtual organizing session okay. my whole career. Um, yeah. I've done one. Um, okay. It worked out really well. It was mm -hmm. really good, but I'm very hands-on, in-person, um, mm -hmm. really like to be there to kind of work with the client. So virtual for me, it, it was okay. It worked out great. The client was wonderful. She loved it. Um, yeah. But I think just for me and my personality, like I'm just harder. more... It was it was harder harder for me than it was probably for her. So I'm like, no, where are you going? Don't do that. No, come back. Like, there's some little tricks that might help you. But just so everyone out there knows, there's this whole move to do virtual organizing, especially mm -hmm. since the pandemic. And it can work really well with the right client. And yeah. with if the organizer has a system they take people through. Because it doesn't matter if you're where you are, the same process gets applied. Mm -hmm. So while it's hard for Nitra and I to sit still during a virtual organizing <laughs> session, <laughs> we're walking you through the same process we would be using if we were yeah. standing next to you. It's right. just hard to sit still sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So I promised people we were going to talk about making your bed. Um, so yeah. we better visit that because I, we got carried away in the last segment and didn't get there. <laughs> So tell me, I think we're opposite on this. We are not aligned on everything. We are not aligned on that, no. I'm not aligned probably with a lot of people on that. <laughs> yeah. All right, so tell the people what we're talking about. So um, <laughs> as an organizer, people always think that we're perfect and our homes are like immaculate and, and although things are in their place in my home, I do not fix my bed. Mm -hmm. I enjoy ironing my sheets and having crisp, sheets but I do not fix my bed I have never believed in fixing a bed growing up because I was like I'm gonna get back in it and mess it up there's nothing about that bed that gives me some type of you know fun sway or like oh I feel so zen just when I see the bed I feel like oh I want to lay in it and I want to get some rest and I don't care if it's fixed or not so you know even growing up that was a big thing with me and my mom because she was a big like fix your bed tuck those corners in and I'd be like yeah I why? I mean, we would have this discussion literally probably my whole life growing up. And at one point, speaking of systems from earlier, for me, what I did to satisfy my mom and create something easier for me is I had the fitted sheet and I had a comforter. So I took the regular sheet off of the bed and all I had to do was shake the comforter and then I was done. And she was happy and I was happy and we didn't have to have the discussion anymore about fixing the bed. I'm like, nobody comes in here. It's not like you let people in my room. You know, I'm like, nobody's going to see this. Why do I, why am I fixing the bed for? You know, so yeah, I, don't, okay. I do not fix my bed. <laughs> so I was only partially right. <laughs> so I don't iron my sheets, but I do make my bed every day, but I do it by just flicking my comforter across the top <laughs> because I don't use a top sheet either. I use, I do use a duvet cover, okay, um, yeah. but see, we solved our problem. Solved our we problem. don't like making the bed and walking around the bed six times I don't. <laughs> to tuck all the sheets in. <laughs> What's easier? One flick of the comforter <laughs> and you're done. It's done. <laughs> see, there's always a way to make it easier. I love that. Oh my God. I thought you were just going to say it's just always kind of messy. Yeah, it is, you know. I also like that you say fix instead of make the bed. I guess that's a southern thing. Yeah, probably. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's a southern thing. Yep, yeah, I fix the bed instead of make the bed. Yeah, you're right. I never even noticed that till now. I know. I say make the bed, but some people here say put up the bed. Mm, um, that's so, interesting. <laughs> yeah, I know. We yeah. put things up in New Mexico. I don't know why. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we um, we are going to be back after this break. I'm Miriam Ortiz Pino. This is the Streamlined Connection on the Bold Brave TV network. And we're here with Nitra um, Rose of Organizing Lifestyles. And we're going to wrap things up and, and um, talk about what you can do to find out more about both of us after we come back. Get the Streamlined Time Solution online course and learn easy ways to control your time and tasks. Links here somewhere, down there, I think. In case you hadn't noticed, we kind of love each other. Um, <laughs> Very we much. are almost the same person. Yeah. Um, it just, it, but we're different. So I'm hoping that this is giving you some insight in how working with an organizer can help you and, and 
the reasons why you you might want to work with one. But Nidra, tell me just what would you like people to know about working with an organizer? Um, I would just like them to know it's it's the best thing you could ever do for yourself. Let me tell you, um, it's the best thing you could do for your family. It's the best thing you could do for your relationship. Um, working with the organizer is going to give you the skill set that you need in order to maintain organization. And it's OK to ask for help. We're here to help you. We're not here to judge you. We're a third party that has no pre-references or anything like that. I know people try to do it with their family and that ends up in an argument or either drinking mm-hmm. wine at the end of the day. But, <laughs> you know, yeah. we're there to really help you get through the stuff and really real put those systems in place um, mm-hmm. when it comes to creating an organized space. Yeah, I love that. And and. I'm pretty sure that when people work with you, they have fun. And I love to make my clients laugh at themselves Mm -hmm. because we're all just human. These things happen. We have had things where we open a drawer and be like, why did I put that? What is that? When did I sneak that in there? (laughs) So just know that it happens to all of us, even us organized people, and that it's not judgment. We're just giving you the eye because we see something you're not seeing. Right, right. And it can work. You know, systems is what sets you free. Mm-hmm. It's the system that helps make your life easier. And um, I just want to know you to know that you can go across. If it's in your business, if it's your home, if it's your camper, if it's your car, if it's the drawer in the kitchen, it doesn't matter what level you're looking at it. What's the system that's going to make it easier for you? And what's one thing you can do to leave it easier for next time as well? Right. Um, right. So I think there's a little piece of future focus that some people struggle with. Yeah. Um, thank you so much, Nitra, for joining me. And I think we're probably going to have you back because this was really fun. Yeah. Um, And if you just hang out for a second, I want to remind uh, the viewers that if you have any questions, comments, concerns, if you would like to hear something specific, you can email me at miriam at morethanorganized.net. You can find more about Nitra at organizinglifestyles.net, correct? Yes, that's right. Um, And next time, I am going to have Ryan Lanier of um, organizing for good on. She's more of an organizing coach. And so you'll get that perspective. And don't forget to tell all your friends because organizing with others is always more fun and visit morethanorganized.net. And thank you for joining us. Have a delightful day.